Okay, guys, so we just ended up getting Division 1 uh, with the Rare Gold team. We have highlights for all of them, so you can see that the way it's set up in-game is with Porto as a striker, Juan Felix as the cam. Um, just going to show you guys me actually getting Division 1. And uh, yeah, we'll talk about the tactics. We'll talk about uh, what you're looking to do if you want to try to get to Division 1. I feel like uh, I want to make this video because a lot of people probably got FIFA during the holidays, so kind of need to help them out in regards to that kind of stuff, right? So uh, getting our foot champs points, uh, unlocking the stuff. This guy was in 1703 skill rating. Uh, we ended up getting our 12 points, 1911, which brings us to Division 1, uh, which they give us a lot of coins for, to be fair. I think they give us... Uh, let's see what they actually give us. They give us 50,000 coins. So now this account has 200k. Um, as you guys can see here, um, I did this just to get the coins because this is probably going to be my uh, review account in the future. Um, but I also wanted to make a video uh, to show you guys that you can potentially get Division 1 with a rare gold team. Depending on your playstyle and depending on a lot of different stuff. Because uh, it is difficult because the gameplay is really bad. All the games that I played actually for the, the highlights that I'm going to probably show you guys is gonna be pretty terrible to be honest like it's it's just really garbage gameplay dribbling's bad controls are bad all that kind of stuff like i'll pass the ball in a certain area and it just you know you know how the game is but it is possible to get division one with a rare gold team right so the tactics that i ended up using uh to get to division one i literally just used one uh some games it was situational so i would have changed my tactics depending on the situation of the game uh but i used the four two three one balance balance instructions for four and four for defense and on the offense i had it set for a long ball four width and six for players in the box just to get some attacking movement out of my players i want to be able to uh attack as much as i possibly can uh and then the important thing with uh, being able to get to Division 1 with a generic team is understanding your player's characteristics, right? So that's why we do the player reviews for individual cards to understand where each position, uh, you know, which players fit each position best, right? So uh, in this situation, I was rotating these players a lot because uh, some of them just were not performing really well to the specific areas that I put them in, right? So I came to the conclusion that I just put Porto up top in the striker position. It's the cheaper option, obviously, to work with. While Juan Felix is the cam. I have an engine on this Juan Felix, but I'll tell you guys this right now. He was missing a lot of opportunities for me, like a lot, a lot, right? Uh, very easy ones as well. But Carrasco and Usman Dembele, for the most part, were actually performing really well for the sides. But again, not necessarily a personal preference of mine. But again, you do have to understand each player's individual characteristics to see how you want them to move, right? So I, I sometimes put Carrasco as a striker with Dembele as a striker, and I kept on rotating it constantly because I was trying to figure out... Uh, what would suit them best for their characteristics, right? So uh, I came to this conclusion. It worked out fine. You know, having Herrera as the high, high worker to play with the four-star weak foot, De Jong on that right side. I use Des because uh, Navas is like really expensive right now because of SBC fodder and all that stuff. But um, yeah, in regards to how the team is set up with the 4-2-3-1 instructions, we have stay back while attacking for the fullbacks, cut pass lane, stay back while attacking cover center for the CDMs, cam, left cam, and right cam is on comeback and defense, and then the striker we do not touch so we rely on his good attacking ai right so porto is actually one of the very very good players to use in the beginning of the game so if you guys get the game right now this team with the chemistry styles will cost you honestly like i think 40k and the only reason why it's 40k right now is because a lot of these players are actually used for sbc fodder right so that's why they cost a lot but with the chemistry styles obviously shadow i think nowadays is like a 3k value and i think the hunter well the engines and stuff like the shadow is the one that's the most expensive but pace is hugely hugely relevant in a game like fifa this year like pace is very very important like you need it right because if you want to play like regular oriented fifa um and you don't want to play like super low depth and stuff you're gonna to have to do stuff like this so um yeah i'm gonna show you guys the highlights in regards to how we scored our opportunities Again, I, I did only use this uh, tactic for the most part. Like some situations in the game, I would switch. Like it would be good to have two different setups, right? Where one is on the long ball setup and then the other one would actually be on the... Uh, I believe I used to put four with with five for players in the box on balance, right? So I would actually have two different tactics set up for two of those different uh, attacking tactics. So uh, yeah, we'll get into the highlights and... Uh, I'll show you guys what I kind of think about when I'm uh, attacking certain players. 
Okay guys, so the thing that we have to mention first and foremost is the type of gameplay that you guys are going to be playing in, right? So this is obviously a very big thing that we have to talk about because everybody when they usually usually watch these types of highlights and whatnot, they always say like, oh, you know, I wish I had this gameplay. I wish my players moved this way and whatnot. Guys, I'm going to tell you this right now. From all of the games that I played here, none of them were quote unquote good gameplay, right? What good players can do when they play this game is they have to compensate for what the mechanics are. But we're fighting controls a lot. You know, sometimes there's certain commands that don't pop off. You do a fake shot, they shoot the ball or pass the ball away. Um, you dribble in certain areas and you kind of have to fight for areas that the game kind of pushes you in. So this is 100% going to be a thing when you play this game at... Uh, you know, these peak times where there's a lot of people on or whatever it is that affects the gameplay being inconsistent. Like I don't often hop on FIFA anymore at nighttime. So that's why I haven't experienced gameplay that's good in a very, very long time. So all the games you see here is gameplay compensation, whether or not the game looks, you know, smooth and responsive to you guys. It definitely wasn't for me, but it's just from what uh, I'm telling you guys that it is a relevant thing to talk about when it comes to what you need to do to win in this game. Right? So that being said, it is important to mention with the 4231 guys. The reason why I think the 4231 or the 442 are the best formations to use in the game, even though I don't like the 442 myself, is because you need to be able to have a narrow buildup as well as a side buildup, right? So a lot of the buildups you'll see with me using this formation is me passing it to the uh, me passing it with the fullbacks to the left and right attacking mids, cutting back inside and then building up the play with the CDMs, right? So I already did the uh, four two three one tactics review from the other day of the other variation of the four two three one that I use, um, depending on the situation of the game, and it's still relevant information uh, nowadays. Where you know if you're attacking the sides. You kind of come back and utilize your CDMs and then utilize your cam, striker, left cam, right cam, and wait for that specific attacking AI to happen, right? So uh, the biggest things that I will mention to you guys is that attacking AI with specific players down to personal preference is definitely going to be a hugely relevant thing when it comes to uh, playing with cheaper squads or just good squads to get better at this game, okay? Because... When we do the player reviews, we analyze a player's specific movements, right? Some players have behave differently. Like with Juan Felix, I personally don't like the way that he moves in the striker position. However, in the cam position, he moves significantly better. And that's the type of stuff that as you play the game, you have to analyze, uh, you know, in regards to how your players are moving. Because there's certain like left and right attacking mids that consistently cut inside and they just keep going. They don't stop cutting inside, right? And there's obviously specific moments where... When when you're building up the play with your CDMs and you run into certain space, your left, right, your center cam, right? All of these guys will behave a certain way based off of the dribbles that you do and based off of the specific runs that you make and how they understand where, which type of space that they should utilize due to these guys making those types of runs, right? So attacking AI guys is a very, at least for me personally, is a very huge thing that you have to analyze when you're using your players, right? Like I tried to use uh, Carrasco and Dembele as my strikers and I really didn't like them there. But Porto, he just played it significantly better for me personally. And that's why I liked using them him there instead. So again, from some of these highlights, you will see either Carrasco or Dembele as a striker in the beginning. But then at some point, I just understand that like, I just don't like the way that they move in this position right so that's why I was constantly rotating so that's a big thing that you have to analyze when playing this game right another thing that you need to be able to use is the mechanics of the game right so it depends on how many of the mechanics that you want to use like for me personally I will very few amount of times use the step over acceleration touch right because I just think it's a stupid thing right I hate that uh instead of just dribbling normally from doing a step over acceleration, your player kind of like accelerates this certain way. So if you want to be able to move quicker across the pitch, that is one of the mechanics you would have to learn skill move wise, right? Um, a big mechanic that actually helped me out to get to division one with a cheap team is the new thing that I taught you guys where you shoot the ball and then you immediately super cancel. If you guys haven't seen that video, be sure to check it out. It's the one where 
it's me essentially explaining how to beat uh, the auto blocks in FIFA, right? And it's essentially waiting to trigger a defensive animation, whether it's the defender or the goalkeeper to be able to attack certain space. Now, the reason why that mechanic specifically is so important is because when your gameplay feels very slow, very sluggish, you need to be able to find a way to trigger that animation for you to move into certain spaces quickly to score your opportunities. And you guys will be able to see that a lot from the highlights that you see here. So that's definitely a huge mechanic that you have to learn. Um, a couple of other skill moves and mechanics that I like to uh, use in FIFA is the heel to heel flick. Um, I like to use the uh, scoop turn. Scoop turn is definitely a huge skill move because when you kind of control the ball in a certain area and you want to get that near post or far post angle, scooping the ball instead of doing like a regular fake shot or something is definitely hugely beneficial because of the momentum it kind of carries into the actual skill move itself. Because the way that the skill move comes off, your player is already positioned to take a real good strike right so having players like Dembele like João Felix with those five star skills is definitely going to be incredibly helpful for these types of situations right but from the build up that you guys are going to see it's a lot of build up through the middle and with the long ball tactics that I use it's me analyzing how each individual player moves off the ball attacking AI wise right and that's where you start to make adjustments in regards to what you think uh, the best positions are for each individual player, right? Like, don't get me wrong, when I used Portu's card, I didn't think he had the most amazing attacking ad striker, but Portu is definitely one of those very, very underrated cards that actually does move across the pitch really nicely. So I should have done the review for the Europa League card because to be honest, he was actually uh, moving across the pitch in a very, very nice way. Um, another thing that you guys are going to have to, um, you know, accommodate for in this game is that you know, the meta in this game is very, very, very defensive heavy, right? You have to be very patient in your build-up play. You have to work the space with your midfield. You have to essentially make your opponents think that you're going to make that disguise pass to a certain attacker, right? Like, you'll notice a lot that when I'm dribbling, uh, I kind of make it seem like I'm going to make this one pass to this oncoming attacker. But what happens is that because it is a disguised run and they make that run into that specific area, another area of the pitch opens up, right? So what happens a lot is if you have aggressive oriented cams or strikers, defenders will start, will start to utilize them and it'll actually create space for you on the sides because people will like to go very narrow to block the middle as much as possible. So the areas that you have to open up the most is the side positions through the buildup of the middle because again, defenders, when being aggressive, especially on a long ball tactic, they start to go inside constantly. The fullbacks actually start to watch those runs from those left and right attacking mids. So good attacking AI is very important for your players to understand, hey, this is the space that I need to use utilize right away for me to be able to score this specific opportunity. So an example like that against this guy, this guy was actually a pretty good player using the shooting cancel animation in both of these situations actually allow me to score against him over here as well. Felix, you can see dribbling, not necessarily the being the best. I do that fake shot. The guy kind of overcommits a little bit into that area and we get that finesse shot angle, right? So it's a very, very helpful mechanic when your gameplay is not to part. And even when it is, it always triggers that defensive animation in the right positions, whether it's a person over committing or the defensive animation actually comes off, right? So again, from the buildup, you guys are going to see a lot of heel to heel flicks, scoop turns, maybe do a fake or bonus to stop the ball a certain way from a certain angle because I like to do the fake Rabona so that if I'm approaching the ball from this angle right here and I do the fake Rabona backwards, I am now facing this angle and I can either pass the ball right away, do an instant croquetta right away so I can get that extra angle to accelerate into certain positions. Like in this situation right here, we did, I believe it was a fake Rabona or a fake shot. And then we did the instant croquetta to get that acceleration uh, with the player to get into that area in the middle to score that opportunity, right? So um, like I said, guys, uh, in the higher divisions, once you start getting higher and higher and you hit this peak, once you hit like division, two-ish, uh, you start to face a lot of people that use very, very similar teams. You know, like the uh, the the Varans, the Mendes, the Joe Gomez, the uh, the Nelson Smedals, and all that kind of stuff, right? And these guys are obviously very effective. They're very meta players, and to be fair, that's kind of how division rivals is set up. So you have to understand that when you take shots from specific angles, the defensive AI from these individual players will save people a lot of the times, and that's why you always have to do the extra little steps to be able to score your opportunities. You're always going to have people that are just going to say, "Oh, you should have just shot that opportunity," but guys people block the ball from Narnia in this game, right? So you have to be able to trick 
trigger those specific animations with the shot cancel for you to score some moments, right? Here is an example with attacking AI movement that I am not triggering myself, that I have to rely on my players to do. Uh, when I was attacking that specific space with De Jong, Carrasco was smart enough to cut inside into that area and aggressively utilize the empty position because of the long ball tactic and the fact that Carrasco actually plays really well in the uh in the left and right attacking mid positions situation like that with porto you can see we start to utilize that super cancel feature Th the guy that you're playing against right he's gonna think once you get that one specific angle that you are 100 percent gonna commit to commit that shot that's when you uh you know do the super cancel go back into the other space you shoot the ball you have more of an opening you have a higher percentage strike uh chance when playing this game right so we can take a look at some of the opportunities that we build up here. A lot of it very, very through ball heavy, right? The through balls in this game are absolutely ridiculous because there's actually a specific setting in the game that, and I tell us in all of my reviews all the time because I think it's absolutely insane that this is a thing, but uh, they actually have a setting where it specifically says to avoid the uh, opposition's defender, which I think is really poor because I think that if someone makes a very poor through ball choice, they shouldn't get rewarded for it, right? But if there's a very obvious opportunity that you should score like this Dembele one where the through ball should work 100%, um, then you should be rewarded for it in that sense, right? But um, yeah, you know, uh, sometimes I got some penalties in certain situations because of the uh, the shot cancel as well. It opened up a lot of spaces for me. Um, you know, you're definitely going to come across people that have more fully meta-oriented teams once you get to Division 1. Um, but Division 2, once you get to like... I would say it's like an 1840, 1800 area, you'll definitely come across it more often, right? So again, most of the buildup is understanding the attacking AI that my players have and how they utilize empty space uh, based off of the positions that I would utilize right away. So that's like the biggest thing that I would tell you guys, right? It's patient buildup. It's understanding each individual player that you have in your team to be able to attack this empty space as much as possible. And just being very patient, man. The 4-4 for balance, guys, it's a lot of L trigger job. Man, you don't want to overcommit to certain tackles if you don't feel like it's necessary because once you overcommit these one or two players for these through balls, it's over for you, man. These guys are just going to do the through ball, score against you really easily, and then you, you know, you kind of have to claw your way back in regards to attacking opportunities. And you know what happens, you know, people get that one or two goals and they go super defensive right away, right? So utilize the shot cancel as much as possible, utilize the through balls as much as possible, as stupid as they are, and uh, you'll definitely get more results playing in this game. So I wanted to make this video for two different reasons. Reasons. I want to show you guys that it is possible to get to Division 1 with a very, very cheap team. And I also want to show this video because it kind of um, it gives more value to the player reviews and for me to kind of prove that, you know, one game, two games is enough for me so that I can show you guys how you want to be able to play this game if you want to be able to fully utilize the cards to its maximum potential. Like I said, man, I kept rotating the specific players on my team because of the attacking AI. It's a very huge thing for me when it comes to FIFA. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy this video. I'll catch you guys for the next one. Peace out, dudes. Love you guys.